Hello there, and welcome to Europa Universalis 4 once again, folks. I'm your host, Chu, and we are long overdue for a EU4 Let's Play. Once again, we're playing the complete version of the game for now, taking a look at uh, all five of expansions with the recently released Common Sense expansion. So with that said, we hop into a single player game and well as going by the video title we are playing England in 1444 today so um, for experienced players of this game and prefer for those who follow it so you kind of already know about the five different expansions but as some of uh, my viewers I know for a fact haven't seen the the full thing we're playing with uh, conquest of paradise which opens up a few new world things uh, things based upon exploration of the of the Americas over here um, specifically with the with the ability to generate a new world so we'll go with that wealth of nations we've checked out in the past it adds a lot of content to merchant uh, republics such as Venice and things like that Respublica, I'm not too terrified Terribly sure it adds a lot of things for governments, but I think it's spread out really, really thinly um, amongst different uh, nations. However, Art of War does exactly what it kind of says. Focuses a bit on Napoleonic stuff as well. El Dorado is another thing. Back to the New World and Common Sense here features an especially interesting set of things for England and a lot of revamps for building buildings. Uh, just in general, a lot of very helpful things. But it's easier to see to see what it does than to talk about it. So let's begin a new game with the random new world setting. And there we go, we are in the game. It is 11th of November. 1444, our reign begins with England in its, uh, well, full glory here. Uh, so one of the things that common sense does is it enhances well firstly how you build up all these provinces this is something that you haven't seen before where uh, depending on your provincial levels in development which is again a new thing um, you can love you buildings have been revamped so that they're not as redundant as before where before they were kind of just a one-off you, you kind of wanted to get as many of them as possible type of thing they've revamped combat in the sense of uh, these new fortress mechanics in addition to that featuring exclusively on uh, on England here, there's a, there's a parliamentary system which is really really rather neat. So um, first things first, we'll check out all of the things that we had to handle, and as it happens to be, the very last thing that we have to deal with is the parliamentary system. So we'll get that started right away. So uh, what is going on inside the world in 11th of November 1444? Well, we are led by King Henry. Uh, the, the sixth yeah the sixth of Lancaster over here now he is unfortunately a very grim figure in history in the sense that at this point in time he has zero skills in all of these three areas being administrative diplomatic and military now um, I could go over effectively the basics of the game, but I think we'll run with it and just kind of talk about where it is relevant. So, uh, your country's is, uh, strength inside administration, diplomacy, and military power is listed here. And these are a mixture of, of your, your leader and his advisors and a few other uh, very specific things. They're quite important in the sense that they're resources that you spend on a wide variety of different things. So, with that said, uh, the first thing I will do is hire an array of advisors to help us out here. Um, the main thing is that I want to try to get these as high as possible and in one of the expansions they fe they've added a new feature here where um, now you can do this once every 20 years in the sense that you can change your national focus or you can remove a national focus. So what this does is that you pick one out of the three powers here, uh, it transfers two units, one from each of the other ones to it and giving you a nice plus two there. So with England, I'm going to change that right away to administrative power because that is the one that I really need. The War of the Roses is going on. It's a bit of a succession crisis with uh, King Henry over here. He's inept. He doesn't have a hair. Um, what is going to happen to the throne of England? Nobody really knows. So this is a period of unrest. And while it sounds kind of bad for a starting area, it's not as bad as before. Choosing some of our rivals. This is just kind of one of the things that the game wants you to do. We can talk about that later later on, but for now we'll skip that, choose a basic mission for ourselves. 
Oh, something happened to my video drivers here. The screen went black, but hopefully that doesn't cut into the recording too much. Uh, so we'll choose those three people, and now we get to have some fun with the English Parliament system here. So how it works is that per the country of uh, of England, later on Great Britain, you have to assign seats to the parliamentary system over here. And as you do that, you get to choose um, it, uh, from a series of issues to try to push through Parliament here. So you have right around, well, uh, th this will change over time, but pretty much every single thing you pass through will either take place for 10 years or there will be a bit of a temp or a bit of a permanent bonus there. And the idea being that each debate lasts at least 10 year or five years to, to pass through. Um, you try to make concessions to the different seat holders of the parliament system to get things to pass. And the game really just kind of goes from there. So with that said, currently we're actually short on seats in parliament. So we can give away a few seats to things for as to, to places such as Essex over here, or else the game just kind of automatically assigns them. So there's a minimum you need to meet. Uh, the good thing about this is that it gives some modifications to the province, mostly increases taxation. So for example, right now we are at 1.06. If I give this away, it bumps that up by 10 cents to 1.16. And I know we need to give another one. Best other place to give it so far, I think would be Yorkshire. So we'll bump that up to 1.03. And I think that, yeah, uh, where that should fulfill this requirement as soon as I unpause the game. Um, so it's a neat little thing. So for right now, for example, we'll have ample Navy, uh, Naval tradition, so I can give away some Naval concessions. We should have enough administration. So I will, I think I'll bump up, uh, yeah, the first debate, just a hundred percent show you guys how that kind of works. Um, so ultimately, you kind of spend things down here and gain things up here. So we'll set that off and we'll take a look at the world in its uh, splendor over here and plan out what we're supposed to do. So we have a fleet flight of light ships over here. These things being quite nice for trading, we'll send them off to the English Channel to get our trading started. Um, FYI, our treasury is up here. And again, sorry folks for the people who watch a lot of this. I'm not quite familiar with, say, how people are in terms of the, the EU game mechanics. Um, personally, I think it's a simple game once you kind of get the hang of it, but after, but, but before that, things can be very kind of wonky. So with uh, common sense, one of the things that they've 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 kind of added in here is the fact that you're not at a war with France at the start of your game anymore. And with that said, it makes it really rather nice in the sense that now you actually have a chance on mainland Europe, whereas before I didn't feel as though you know you really had the ability to do so. So currently, with us holding kind of parts of uh, of. France and the vital port at uh, the port of Calais over here. Um, Begrundi and France are eyeing our territory from the very start of the game. So that's kind of why I chose them as two of our rivals. And the, the gist of rivalry is uh, if you fight your rivals, you get different kind of bonuses against them in battle and outside of battle. So with that said, I will choose to ally ourselves with Savoy and Brittany them being minor, I would say moderate powers that could help us in our rivalry against France, and I'll also send one to the Austrian Empire, which should be um, the best mainland Europe country in terms of military might. I think we're rivaled by perhaps the, the, the alliance between Poland and Luthania uh, at this time, but currently they should help us out. Um, I'll take a few royal marriages here, and what royal marriages do is that they increase how um, the, the likeliness of us getting a heir to the throne, which is very, very good for us. In addition, I, they'll do some other stuff for us with regards to legitimacy and prestige. Often how it works is that the lower in prestige you are, um, you'll typically gain less legitimacy with signing those. Uh, but on the other hand, it can really help you out. So let's see, we are still short a seat in Parliament. So I think we'll ship one out to just tabbing over here. I'm looking at the provinces that have the highest taxation. I think it's a Wessex over here. So we'll give them a seat in parliament as well. And that should be all. And now we get to check out a few other the neat features they've added throughout uh, the times. So 
that moving your armies across rivers and across, uh, well not rivers, but straits of water is much easier in the sense that you can automate your fleets to transport your, your forces. And I believe this was introduced in, uh, in the art of war, not common sense where your people can just kind of um, separate themselves into your into smaller armies and kind of ship them over as such. So I believe, yeah, we can carry nine regiments at most at one time. In the past, I mean, you had to do that manually, so that was, a, it was kind of a pain in the butt there. Another royal marriage from uh, Portugal, so as you can see, bit of a bonus to yearly legitimacy gain. And legitimacy is a, it's kind of a how valid is your rule type of thing. Improved relations with the country and... Um, Better chances for a new heir, of course. So, our, legit our legitimacy is measured up here. Typically, it'll be very, very close to 100. I'll, I'll let it kind of fluctuate inside the 90s zone, because as you may have noticed over here, uh, the allow of use for crown lands is one of the, uh, the options available for us. And currently, we'll take a bit of a penalty for having um, all of those of unfavorable-ish royal marriages set up for now and this is just because they're uh the people trying to make arrangements with us is uh, prestige is lower than ours to to some extent so we'll get that set up another thing that they've done here is this here is the uh they've revamped how fortresses work inside the game um inside the previous titles i mean how it used to be that uh each and every single tile inside your your empire your your empire would have a fortress and the problem with that was it led to uh, as as of course the viewers will know um a lot of different uh, sieges all over the place so with this said this speeds things up but it also adds a few things here and there for uh, for defensive play um so our fleet is still transporting we will speed the game up to a more reasonable pace and well, um, yeah, with, with the new fortress system, it's rather important in the sense that they cost something to maintain every month, no matter what. And with that said, I would rather not pay that than uh, anything, which also incidentally increase our income given the, the lack of maintenance we have to pay. So um, there will be a bit of a slow period for now. And in the meantime, we can make some moves of our uh, own just to kind of set up to what we want to do. So, uh, lots of different things that we can do with uh, Great Britain over here. Some of them will be kind of ahistorical, some of them can be very, very historical if we choose to go down that route. Firstly, I've got it set up so that one of our missions is to kind of swindle up to the uh, the Papal state, so we'll do that right away. Now, unfortunately, this thing will kind of hinder us in this, but, uh, but for good measure, the Lollard Heresy here. Um, this is a pretty important event inside the, uh, the the British line of events here. So uh, the Lollards were, yeah, they were kind of a religious minority that the uh, the Catholic Church did not like very much. We can kind of accept them in England, or we can kind of reject them in England. If we reject them, we get more Papal influence till the rest of the game. Um, if we do not, we or if if we were. If we, if we accept them, rather, we kind of, well, obviously do not get those bonuses, but also it, uh, yeah, it, it kind of sets up for a few other things. So um, I'm going to go for a bit of an ahistorical route, so I think I'll actually reject them. And with that said, they'll create a rebel faction inside the uh, the game, and gradually as that kind of fills up, they'll start to uh, openly revolt and they'll generate their own army on the map. Um, but the reason being is that, so a couple of things. Um, one thing, of course, to form Great Britain, we probably want to nab Ireland over here and Scotland at some point. We'll try to do that later on when Eng when Ireland is uh, is consolidated by one of the uh, the minor um, for were one of the min minor countries over there, and we'll try to go for Scotland as soon as they're not guaranteed by France. So in the meantime, let's see, we can gain some prestige, or we can put in the treasury. We'll gain some prestige for now. Um, with the the papal uh, states you you can play the religious side of europe at this time of course um the idea is that you can gain a various amount of different cardinals for your your nation as time goes on you can kind of it's a it's kind of a game between spending the minimum amount of papal influence per per round versus securing one of those cardinals and um the thing with it is that the more cardinals you get the kind of more easier it is to gain more papal influence which in turn allows you to use some of the pal actions over here which are really rather handy um the bonus with getting um say relations high with the papal state is that it modifies the amount of gain you get 
from opposing the lords we get an artificial bonus of one and from our controlled cardinals we get um a single point and hey would you look at that we have king henry the seventh um born and uh well that kind of secures the, the the heir to the throne for someone a little bit more competent i mean 333 is kind of the basic um portion for for a leader but um king henry the yeah the seventh of Lan lancaster or, or not yeah or yeah the seventh should be pretty competent right there so things are all well and good there um in the meantime I, I want to say that we'll try to perhaps move on Burgundy over here with France, depending on who kind of starts a war first. Um, in the meantime, it would seem as though the Lollard uh, heretics are starting to get back in strength, so I think I'll move our armies back from from Europe back onto the mainland of England so that we will try to quell this, uh, this rebellion before it starts type of thing. So yeah. One of the things I wanted to do immediately was uh, kind of ensure that our border provinces here wouldn't be taken by the by the French or the Burgundians. But uh, this will go where this should work out finally either way. And in the meantime, we'll build up the army by a bit. I think we'll get uh, two or three units of infantry, another unit of cavalry for our forces over here. And the Royal Army at the start of the game so happens to be led by Richard Planknet. I don't know how to pronounce his last name over here. The, the point being is that he's a, he's a wonderful leader at the start of the game when typically you see people with like maybe one point in all of those abilities. He starts out with a whopping three and four. So he's he is quite good just kind of on its on by himself. Um, so we'll get our forces to regroup here and see how fast we can kind of put down the uh, the rebellion over here. In the meantime, we're kind of um, in this tech race at the moment. I want to build up some administrative power. As we all know, powers you can spend on technology, amongst a, a few other things inside uh, the newest expansion. Um, namely, I want to tech up an administrative tech so I can get a few idea groups. And with idea if this loads up, there we go. We can get a wide variety of different helpful bonuses. The main thing is that I want to start exploring the new world and seeing what is over there. So we might pick that up first or on, on, on second thought, probably second. Okay, so improvement relation bonuses with a few other people. That will just kind of go as is. And we're just kind of waiting out this uh, 80%. So we'll, we'll speed up the game to the maximum speed and see how well they do. So this will last, from the looks of it, about a hundred. Yeah, yeah, it will last quite a while. So the main thing is that I want to see, or or from the looks of it, if we leave our armies here on mainland England, um, the rebellion is qualmed for now, which should be should be decent. But I still want to embark upon a campaign on mainland. Europe for for the well-being and I see that Burgundy over here is at war so you know what we will fabricate a claim at them we finished that uh, mission to solidify re our relations with the Papal state so I can actually recall a diplomat but I have nothing better to do with them so I'll leave them as is um, and this would be an interesting mission to try to force a union with France that would be a major 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 game changer um, and it's actually not much better than that. So you know what? We could try to force that. Taking a look at uh, whether or not France here is one of the countries with disputed succession. Now, I doubt I can actually do that without any serious repercussions. But you know what? I'm going to save the game and I'm going to see whether or not... Uh, or, as I was saying, I'm going to save the game and I'm going to see whether or not we can kind of force uh, or get a claim from doing that mission. So I noticed that the sound might stutter when I open up these screens just because I have a lot of previous kind of save games um, going on here as well. So there we go, we'll load that up. We'll select this mission to try to force a union with France and perfect, we gain a, um, well, we gain a Cusus Bully, a reason for war against them. So this will this will be a very nice let's play provided that we can do that, uh, or provided that we can kind of finish that mission. So, uh, what we can do here is that we can spend a bit of military power on harsh treatment, aka kind of um, quelling the rebel forces for a very short amount of time. Um, so we'll do that immediately, and we'll try to move some more forces back onto mainland Europe. Since all 
Austria isn't at war with anyone, Savoy isn't at war with anyone, and Brittany isn't at war with anyone. I'm sure they will, and where I'm sure Savoy and Brittany at the least will have kind of a qualm against France and them being at war with Burgundy. We, uh, Burgundy will, ch chances are, draw their forces out in the meantime. Um, with our army led by a superb general, we may be able to win quite a nice war with them. I need one of my diplomats back, so I'll call that one back. Declare war on them. See who will join me. And from the looks of it, Savoy will not. Um, why would they not? They have a positive attitude towards their enemies. A. Eh? We will call upon them. See whether or not they do uh, do it or not. And if they do not, then they'll take a prestige hit over here, and that'll also break off our alliances with them. Well, never mind, we also have a royal marriage, so I think we'll leave it at that. Um, we will try to take the capital of Paris, they will be joined by a few minor nations, but um, we shall see, we shall see what happens over here. So, um, at the time being, they have a bit of a bigger army, our allies will join in with the myth that is Austria, of course. In the meantime, naval fight. So, no leader going up against a, a, a leader, a, a force led by Pascal Dufaré. Um, this will be a fight easily won by the by the glorious English Navy, so that'll be that. And, well, I think we uh, just throw in, throw our armies into the fight against France over here. And as you can see, once our allies join in here, our forces greatly outnumber the French. So, one of the things that they've added here with the fortress system is that, so for example, um, when I try to move my forces around enemy territory, you see all of this comes up. And what this means is that these fortresses exert a zone of control. So, for example, if I wanted to say move to uh, the tower right before Par behind Paris, um, we kind of have to shimmy around it because Paris itself, having a fortress, uh, puts down a, 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 how should I say it, um, a, an effect which kind of keeps movement away from it. So, it, so now fortresses, they're, they're a lot more limited, but at the same time, they block movement. So... Um, all we really have to do is to take Paris in that case. I think we will march upon it and keep our armies there. So, uh, ordinarily, I mean, I try to kill off their armies. And in fact, uh, I see them marching towards our allies. Our allies probably will not hold, but we'll try to um, get to them nevertheless. Yeah. Um, the main thing with it is that it, 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 it opens a lot more options for, for defense, which is really, really nice. It used to be that, I mean, fighting was more or less just kind of throwing men into the fray. Yeah, so there we go. We got a nice French victory, and in fact, we managed to destroy a French army like that. And I think we'll just try to take uh, this port town over here. Bring our army or bring our navy back in support for a block hit, and we'll go from there. So, very, very handy dandy. And oh, another thing that they've added was that in the past, um, because you can kind of move your armies on a whim here, I mean, there's no kind of pack up the camp and, uh, you know, figure out what where you're actually moving to time. Now, um, once you've finished halfway moving into another province, as odd as that sounds, uh, the game kind of locks in your movement. So in the past, I mean, it was kind of finicky in the sense that it, it, small armies would be really, really difficult to catch because they could just always shift their movement whenever you'd move your army, right? Um, so, a nice boat, like, uh, it's, uh, it's nice that they've resolved that. And for now, I'm just going to check on whether or not our women use harsh treatment on the Lollard heretics again, and that'll take some time, so that'll be very, very good. In the meantime, looks like we gained something right over there, and the English Parliament will hopefully pass my debate uh, soon enough. There's a bit of a 10% chance, and what else has happened inside the world? Influenza. Oh no. So, some sailors have come back with, with, with disease. We can either quarantine the port, lose some temporary income, or risk losing more as the infection spreads, so we'll try to quarantine that right away. And nobles ally with a foreign power. We can either gain a Cusus Bali against Brittany, our ally, lose some administrative power in the process, or lose some prestige. I'll take the prestige, prestige hit, you know what? And victory inside parliament, meaning that it'll be cheaper to unlock technologies, saving us um, some powers there. So this will not be enacted for 10 years, and afterwards, um, then we we kind of switch gears and try to uh, renegotiate or go back into the debate system again. 
So this is very, very nice. France is at a war with a lot of people, but mind you, um, depending on the, the sequence, the order of uh, declaring peace, um, how it might happen is that we might take control of France as a, as a personal union type of thing, and then we'll be thrown into a fight against Burgundy, Nevers, uh, Barbaranted people. Um, at least I think that is how it works. I know that it works similarly for, for vassal countries in the sense that if you make a country your, your vassal, aka they are under your command, at, at least indirectly, um, that you will have to fight whatever current wars they have going on. But we'll see. For now, let's try to take this province. Um, so far, so good. The siege is going along nicely. And, uh, well, we should mop up our first siege in no time. And first seasoned players, as you may have noticed, you can conquer vast spans of territory fairly easily now because uh, these provinces, they don't have any fortresses, right? So after a month, they'll turn into this kind of shaded area, indicating that uh, they are kind of now your garrison, or they're kind of under your garrison. Um, the bad thing being is that I believe fortresses they, they take either slightly longer or, or something of the sort. Looks like uh, looks like there's quite a large fleet led by Savoy in Venice over here, kind of blockading our forces. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm sure they are losing the land war against Austria over there. And there we go. So we finished our first siege. Right. So we'll move our our fleets into port. Austria has our backs. They are siege. Perry for us. Um, so you know what? We'll move down here. Looks like our ally Brittany here is also <laughs> trying to siege a, uh, a fortress, but unfortunately they just don't have enough the man. They don't have enough manpower to complete it. So what do we do here? We split our armies into a few different air or a few different smaller columns, and we'll just occupy the land nice and proper over here. And one of the things that they've added here is the uh, the whole looting and raiding mechanic first seen, I believe, in uh, the Viking expansion for Crusader Kings 2, where, um, depending on the size of your provinces, or your enemies' provinces, and your army, um, you can loot a specified amount of cash from these provinces as time kind of continues. Very, very nice. So that How long were... Can we... Uh, can we... Uh, this kind of kind of um, union with France, and it would take 60 war power, war, war score. So it's possible. It's definitely, definitely possible. For but for now, I think we'll need to uh, wait until France, where France finishes up its conflict with Burgundy, perhaps before we can kind of fully pursue that. Now, hmm, this might be a bit of a drastic move, but I might have to bump up our our stability here just to kind of cancel out the Lullard heresy over here. They will break out into rebellion very, very fast. And I definitely do not want that to happen during a war with France right now. So, I mean, with, uh, with Great Britain, I think we can give up diplomatic tech for a little bit of time. Diplomatic tech would help us a lot along the way for uh, naval ventures, especially into the new world. But for the time being, um, we, you know, we don't necessarily have to pursue that immediately. Um, so with that said, to handle these rebellions, another thing that we can do is kind of boost our sub stability, which would make it harder for um, national unrest to go up. So I'm not expecting that with that to do all too much, but my consideration is that, I mean, Venice just has this big old fleet over here, and you know what? That will be really, really hard to deal with um, for, for the time being. So, you know what? We will give that up for now. Um, I see that Venice has been fully kind of eliminated. We sue for peace with them. See whether or not we can... So yeah, we're negotiating for our entire alliance. They will try to negotiate for themselves. And we'll see whether or not we can kind of... Kind of give them white peace or something like that. And from the looks of it, they will not accept anything. So we will have to wait because that, uh, the Lollard Heresy over here will take a bit of time to overcome. Yeah. So they will, they might break into an open rebellion soon enough, which would be really, really bad for us. Forgot to reform the army there, but there we go. 
The main thing is that I do want to finish up with France very, very fast. The reason being is that the minute that rebellion breaks out, very, very bad things happen. Another one of the new features that they've added in the game is this uh, idea of autonomy inside the new expansion. So, autonomy measures over varies from 0 to 10%, or not 0 from 10%, but to 100%. And how it works is that, um, in proportional to the amount of autonomy you have in your provinces, um, you're, as you're, as they become more autonomous, you lose taxation, income, and stuff like that. The bad thing with rebellions is that as they kind of spread and take over provinces, those provinces get 10% autonomy, which will reduce your taxation by, I believe, 10% accordingly, and a, a whole bunch of other things as well. So it's it's not very very good. It doesn't necessarily kind of you know kill us off right uh, right off the bat, but it is by far not something that I want happening. And right now, I just want to get my army across back onto uh, England, I suppose. For the sake of pressing pressing back at them. I think Austria has the land war kind of covered. So we'll see what we can do here. And our income's running a bit low, so I'll raise war taxes over here. It won't actually raise our income, it'll kind of lower our maintenance, which has the same effect, of course. And let's see. Transport the last remaining bit of the army over. Right, grab them, and I'll send them off against the rebels. So, um, coming from the previous games, it depend with these rebellions, so as long as they lose one fight, they, they effectively break and go back to being their regular selves. Now, um, this is there's there's two forces occupying London right now. So I think for in the interests of uh, we're in the long term interests of kind of continuing all of these wars. I think it'd be better to just honestly let them siege London for the sake of um, letting letting them break off into two smaller forces. It'll help us save some losses, and because our manpower pool is at zero right now, I think that would have the added bonus of allowing us to continue or you know swap back onto the land war perhaps with some mercenaries after all we can choose to loot the uh, the the french provinces for money and to bring the conflict over there but in the meantime we can finish up on a whole a few things on the home front as well so we'll try to take back marshes over here and then um see what else we have to mop up Pretty good so far for a first episode. Ah, and there we go. So um, another thing that would be in 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 kind of in line with the series of events coming from, um, say the the War of the Roses, if it were to go on right now, is uh, Margaret of Anjou over here. So since our ruler is kind of feeble right now with zero zero zero, we can we can swap it so that she can be the uh, the the ruler. Uh, or alternatively, we can trade that for a whole bunch of power uh, in, inside the three different areas. So the issue with this is that I'm not quite sure with what happens to the hair of the throne, but you know what? In the past, I fired this off, so I will go with it. And it doesn't look like it swaps our, our hair to the throne, so we'll leave it as is, and that bumps us up in terms of administration, um, diplomatic, and military power to new heights, which is really, really handy. So now, let's see. Okay. So the force of rebels, they didn't actually split into a group of two. I was rather surprised by that. We'll see, though. They'll typically move around the country as uh, as time continues. So maybe when we're finished the siege over here, they will. Or no, they are, uh, they are going to engage us. Okay, they're fighting across the river. We have a better leader than theirs. They will be, yep, eliminated from the game like that. So pretty good. And we'll get our forces to just kind of mop up the uh, smaller, or no, oh, the smaller forces like that. And bah, there's a political crisis. So we'll lose some legitimacy over here, over stability. They don't want any more, um, any more forces appearing out of nowhere. And you know, what? 
on mainland France. We can negotiate for a uh, union right now, but what this will do is that it will indeed start a war with Burgundy, Navarre's, a whole bunch of different countries for the time being. And with that said, you know, I don't think we... Um, or rather, I don't know if we keep our alliances or our... Um, or I don't know if that keeps Austria in the fight here with us. So uh, what we could do is... Or rather, what my plan to do is uh, finish up mopping here, save the game, and then kind of recontinue over there. And there we go. So now we are... Now if we kind of um, claim the throne of them, we will be at war with Provence, Lorraine, and Milan, which are fairly small countries. But just to be sure, I'm going to check by tab over here to France. Or no, that's not what I want to do. Tab over here to France. Check out who they are at war against. Milan is over here. Provence, I think it's, yeah, this blurb over here. Lorraine is this blurb over there. Um, there we, have a, we have a very good chance at doing this. So I'll sue for peace with France. I will ask them to, in addition to um, kind of forming that personal union with us, I will ask them to give us uh, all of their or a large amount of their treasury. So we'll send that off. They will. They have to accept, really. And here you go. That is the defeat of France. Something that you'd never see in uh, perhaps EU three or something other such like that. So, um, we lose a few Casas Belize against France because, I mean, hey, we've conquered them. We gained the prestige from forcing a union with France, but the main thing is that that is uh, one of the biggest rivals inside the game conquered in the first episode. So, very, very good. Um, so, the terms are, well, we will form a union with uh, Marguerite being queen of both nations over here. This will drag us into a war with province and people, but that will not be a big issue for the time being. Um, so let's see whether or not that war starts. No, it has not. Uh, well, no. People are entering military coalitions against us, but that's a that's a fairly small issue. And what does that is is that when people start to enter coalitions against you, typically that means you are a little too powerful for their liking, and they've elected to uh, go against you for 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 the sake of well, kind of collectively whittling you down the good thing being with our ser series of alliances it will be uh very we, we should be able to put up quite a good fight against them now the good thing is that with all of these people that is starting to be uh worrying <laughs> um so i think we'll save the game right here and one of the things is that that puts ourselves over the uh, amount of diplomatic relations we can have so that'll re remove or, or lower the amount of uh, diplomatic points we gain per um, per per month but it should be fine so we'll save the game as lp2 here and continue off uh, another day but i hope you guys enjoyed the the well the the first episode in our let's play here because we've had some spectacular uh, events already so far but for now um be sure to, well, like the video, comment, and uh, tell me what you guys think about the game so far in the comments below. Bye-bye for now.